Hello, you're welcome to our lecture on chordates. Today's lecture is on the class reptilia, the reptiles. And we're going to look at the classification of reptiles. Earlier, we had discussed about the reptiles, that they are uh, tetrapod vertebrates that are amniotes, that are neither birds nor mammals and that they are characterized by the possession of scales. And though some of them have scutes, some have shells like the tortoise, and they also have five digit toes, toes and that they are poikilothermic. They are cold blooded organisms. So today's lecture will be on the classification of these reptiles. The extinct reptiles have been classified into three class, three subclasses and four others. You know, some reptiles have gone into ex 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 extinction, but the ones that are currently existing belong to three subclasses and four others. The three subclasses are a subclass Anapsidae, the subclass Lepidosauria, the subclass Acosaria. The subclass Anapsida has a sub, as a, has an order that's called Chilonia or Testudines, or it's also called Testudinata. And the Testudines consist of the turtles, the tortoises, and the terrapins. The subclass Lepidosauria has two others, the other rhincocephalia and the other squamata. The other rhincocephalia and the other squamata. Rhincocephalia has the tuataras as the only existing members, while the subclass, the, the other squamata has the lizards, the snakes, and the amphibians. The other squamata is further divided into three sub others. And the three sub others in the other squamata are the sub other sauria, which is made up of the lizards, the sub other serpentis, which consists of the snakes, and the sub other amphibians, which consists of the amphibians. The third subclass, the subclass Acosaria, has just one existing order, the other crocodilia. Mm -hmm. And the other crocodilia have examples such as the crocodiles, the alligators, the caimans, the gavios, the four and the false gavios. So I want to look at first the other anapsida, sorry, the subclass anapsida the subclass Anapsida. This subclass or the reptiles in this subclass are characterized by the lack of temporal fenestry. The temporal fenestra basically means a temporal opening that's in the skull. And this opening is on both sides of the skull. Okay, this Anapsida lack such opening in the skull. The word an absida basically means they do not have opening. Okay, an absida. Okay, this and uh, that is the members of this subclass are uh, amnutes whose skull lacks one or more skull openings near the temples. They lack temporal fenestry. They lack temporal fenestry. Temporal fenestry basically refers to openings in the temporal region of the skull of some amnus, and it's usually behind the orbit. Though there are some that have this uh, uh, temporal opening after the orbit, okay, and uh, sorry, in front of the orbit. The orbit means the eye socket. The orbit basically means the eye socket. In this, uh, in this call, okay, because of the location of the 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 fenestry or the openings, the fenestry are divided, are uh, classified into two. We have the the 
an orbital Venus 3, that's an opening that's in front of the orbit, that's in the anterior side of the orbit, while the post-orbital Venus 3 is behind the orbit, behind the orbit, two openings behind the orbit. The only living other is the other Kelonia or Testudines. It is also called the other Testudinata, which consists of the turtles and the tortoises. Now, the other Kelonia or Testudines, which are the tortoises, the turtles, and the terrapins. The other Kelonia or Testudine consists of about 250 species of reptiles that characteristically have most of their bodies enclosed in hard shells, which also includes the pectoral and the pelvic fin. The major feature of these organisms is that they have shells. Their bodies are enclosed within shells, just as it is in the turtles, in the tortoise, and the terrapins. They have shells that are enclosing their bodies. The jaws of turtles and tortoises are toothless with a honey beak. These organisms in the other Chelonia have toothless jaws and they have honey beaks. They have beaks instead of uh, teeth. Their skull are without pineal or temporal fenestry. They have, they don't have pineal fenestry. The pineal fenestry means the openings that are in the middle of the forehead, openings in the middle of the forehead. By temporal fenestry basically means openings that are the sides of each of the head. Though the temporal region may be imaginated or indented in some species. Now, this is uh, a typical example of an organism in the other Kelonia. Okay, it is in the subclass Anapsidae in the class Reptilia. Okay, the class is Reptilia, subclass Anapsida, and the other is Kelonia. So you can see in this figure, the turtle has a shell, and the shell is the characteristic feature of this group. This is the freshwater mud turtle. Also, the leatherback turtle, which is also a sea turtle, um, is characterized by a back, is carapace that's made up of leather. And just as you can see, in, it has flippers for swimming, it has flippers for swimming. This was uh, a leatherback caught, turtle that was caught in Akasa in brass local government area of Bayasa State, Nigeria. Okay into turtle conservation. So we rescue such turtles. Now this is uh, the green turtle. The green turtle and also has the carapace, the feet, the forelimbs and hind limbs are modified into flippers for swimming. One distinctive feature between the turtles and the tortoises is that they um, feet and the head are permanently exposed. They are not retracted into the body, unlike the tortoise, tortoises that have feet that are retracted. These are green turtles that were rescued and are now returned, that came to breed in the Atlantic coast around Akasa in Nigeria, and are now returning back to the ocean. They're now returning back to the ocean. This sea turtle was caught by fishermen, uh, though it's already dead, so there was no way it could be rescued. So the sizes are usually very enormous, as you can see. This is the olive ridley sea turtle, having that characteristic of having a shell. This is the terrapin, terrapin, the diamondback terrapin. Malak Clemis Tarapin. 
Now I want to talk about the subclass Lepidosauria. The subclass Lepidosauria. The reptiles in the subclass Lepidosauria, now the word Lepidosauria is derived from the Greek word, which means scaled lizards. So the reptiles in this subclass Lepidosauria are reptiles with overlapping scales. They are reptiles with overlapping scales. They include the lizards, the snakes, the amphibians, and the tuataras. They include the lizards, the snakes, the, the amphibians, and the tuataras. These reptiles usually have a pineal eye. A pineal eye basically means a degenerate median eye-like structure that's found in the head of, the, of these uh, reptiles. <clears throat> they do not exhibit any trend towards bipedal uh, bipedalism. The ribs are single-headed in advanced form, their ribs. These organisms are diapsids. That's to say that they have two openings behind the orbit. They possess two openings behind the orbit. So they have post-orbital fenestry. They have post-orbital fenestry. Now here is uh, a figure that's showing the openings in the skull of various reptiles. It's a general, generalized image mm -hmm. of the various openings. This is a lateral opening. Then it is called the lateral temporal fenestry. Then the fenestry that's in front is said to be ant orbital fenestra. Okay, then this is the orbit where the this is the, the eye socket. Okay, and you also have supra temporal fenestry. Okay, so they are organisms that have openings in the head. The male lepidosarians possess a hemipenis instead of a single penis with erectile tissue that's found in crocodiles, birds, and mammals. So they have, they possess a hemipenis. A hemipenis is basically made up of two, uh, it has two penises that are just beneath the feet, just uh, between the, the tail and the, the pelvis. The hemipenis can be found in the base of the tail. It's found at the base of the tail. The tortara do not possess penis, but instead has shallow paired out pockets of the posterior wall of the cloaca that have been determined to be the precursors to the hemipenis. So the tuataras are exceptions to this. They, they do not have a hemipenis. Furthermore, most lepidosaurs, lepidosaurs have the ability to autotomize their tails. That's to say that they have the ability to deliberately shed their tails, usually to escape from predators. When they are being, when a predator bites their tail, they cut off their tail in order to escape from the predators. Also, the scales in lepidosaurs are horny. That's their keratinized, uh, keratinized structures of the epidermis, allowing them to be shared collectively, contrary to the skills seen in other reptiles. The subclass Lepidosaria is further classified into two others. The subclass Lepidosaria is further classified into two others, and the two others are the other Rhecocephalia, which consists of the bit reptiles like the tuataras and the subclass squamata. The subclass squamata has the lizards, the snakes, and the amphibians. I want to talk about the other rhincocephalia. The rhincocephalia consists of the tuataras. These are scaled lizard-like reptiles that are characterized by the overhanging of the premaxillary over the lower jaw as a beak. The premaxillary overhangs 
over the beak, the, pre, the, the upper part of the, the upper part of the jaw overlaps over the lower jaw, over lower part of the mouth, as if it's a, a beak. The teeth of the tuataras are acrodont. That is, they are attached to the edge of the jaw rather than inserted in sockets. The sole living members of this reptilian, reptilian order, Rhecocephalia, are the tuataras. The tuatara has two pairs of well-developed limbs, a strong tail, and a scaly crest down the neck and the back. The scales which cover the entire animal are usually very small. The scales of the tuataras are, sorry, they vary in size. They vary in size. The tuatara also has a bony arc low on the skull behind the eye that is not found in lizards. This arc is formed by the presence of two large openings or fenestra in the region of the temple. An unusual feature of the tuatara and some lizards is the inconspicuous third eye on the top of its head that's called the parietal eye. The squamates have what we call parietal eye, a third eye that is found on the head. And this eye is concealed under a layer of scales. The eye has a lens and a retina and is connected to the nerves, by nerves to the brain. So why is it that this organism has an eye that is covered up? Why an eye if it will be covered up? The parietal eye may function to alert the tuatara if it has been exposed to too much sunlight, protecting it against overheating. So basically that is the function. It gives the tuatara some signal so that it will not overheat. Unlike many reptiles, tuatara are most active at low temperatures. The tuatara are most active at low temperatures. They burrow during the day and feed on insects, worms, and other small animals at night. So they stay in their burrows during the day, but at night they come out to feed on insects, worms, and other small animals. The tuatara is also unique among reptiles and not possessing a male copulatory organ. The tuatara lack male copulatory organs. As in birds, sperm transfer is affected during contact between the male and female cloaca. So to carry out sexual intercourse, they only put their cloaca together, they, their anuses together, and the sperm is introduced into the cloaca of the female and the fertilization takes place internally. Now this is a tuatara, just as it has been described, the upper, uh, the premaxillary overhangs over the lower one. Then we also have the crest, the crest of the tuatara runs from the head down to the tail. And this is the only existing species that's called Sphenodon Kong. Tatus. Until recently, the Tuatara lived on two main islands of New Zealand. Today, it is found only on certain islets in Cook Street between the main islands and islets between East Cape and Northern Cape of the North Island of New Zealand. They are found only in New Zealand. Others, the next order I want to look at is the other squamata, the other squamata, which are scaly with lizards. Reptiles that belong to the other squamata include the lizards, snakes, and amphibians. Lizards and the other squamata are uh, the lizards, the snakes, and the amphibians. The squamata or the scaled lizards 
are the largest order of reptiles comprising all lizards and snakes. It has over 9,000 species. And as such, it is the second largest order of vertebrates after the Perciformis. Members of the order are distinguished by their skins, which bear honey scales or shields. The members of this group possess honey scales. Possess honey scales. In addition, changes in the morphology of the head and jaws allow greater strength and mobility. This um, the squamates also possess movable quadrate bones, making it possible to move the upper jaw relative to the brain case. This is particularly visible in snakes, which are able to open their mouths very wide to accommodate comparatively large prey. The, the snakes can open their mouths wide, okay? Their jaws can separate, okay? to accommodate very large prey. That's common among this group. One other distinguishing characteristic of this order is the presence of paired copulatory organs in the males, the hemipenis. Okay, the lizards possess hemipenis and other members of this um, order, squamata, have the hemipenis, which is the male copulatory organ. They are the most variably sized order of reptiles, ranging from the 16 millimeter or 0 0.63 inch dwarf gecko to the 6.6 .6 millimeter green anaconda. And 6.6 .6 meter, that's 22 feet green anaconda, which is called Genectus morinus. And the now extinct Mosasaurus, which reached lengths of 14 meters, that's 46 feet. The other squamata is further classified into three extinct sub orders, and the sub orders are the sub order Sauria or Lassatilia or the lizards. The suborder Amphisbiana, which consists which consists of Amphisbianas, and the suborder Serpentis. So now I want to look at the suborder Sauria or Lassatilia. The suborder Sauria or the common lizards include the iguanas, chameleons, geckos, and the anos. This is the most generalized order. Most species have well-developed limbs, an external ear opening, movable eyelids, or some combination of these structures. So that's one distinctive feature. They have well-developed limbs and also have external ear opening and movable eyelids. They can open and close their eyes. They have eyelids, which is different from the serpentis, the sub-order serpentis, the snakes. The skull typically has pineal opening and epipterygoid lacrima and jugoid bones. The epipterygoid, sorry, the, the lacrima means relating to the glands that produce tears or the ducts through which they drain. Okay, so their score typically has pineal opening and also have uh, glands that are able to do that. Most species are small, measuring less than a foot in length. The largest lizards belong to the family, mo mo belongs to the monitor family, the monitor lizards. The largest of all monitors is the Komodo dragon of Indonesia, which reaches three meters in length and can weigh more than 100 kilograms. This order has about 3,000 living species. Now here is the male Agama lizard, a picture that was taken from uh, brass, and here is another female, female Agama lizard, okay? These are members 
of the sub other spahata. Okay, the sub other the other spamata and then the sub the other squamata and the sub other sauria the other squamata and the sub other sauria all right so i want to now look at yeah this is uh, the female agama lizard you have the male agama lizard sorry the chameleon Cam chameleon's sheep because uh, this picture was taken in Masuma in Nigeria by Esther State. Then this is uh, the monitor lizard, Varanus niloticus, okay, which is the monitor lizard. Then a skin, the common garden skin. Want to now look at a suborder Amphis biennia, the suborder Amphis biennia. Amphis biennia is a suborder of usually legless squamous, comprising over 180 extant species. Amphisbianians are characterized by long bodies, reduction or loss of limbs, and rudimentary eyes. They have very long bodies like the snakes. They have reduced feet, although some of the, them have lost their limbs. They are like snakes without limbs and they possess rudimentary eyes. They are highly specialized burrowing reptiles. They live in burrows where the eye is hidden under their skin. Okay, their eyes, the eyes of these amphibians are hidden under their skin. No pineal opening and the body scales fuse into annuli or rings. Okay, so their scales are in form of rings in the body. The skull is suddenly constructed as a growing wedge. As many species possess pink body coloration and scales arranged in rings, they have a superficial resemblance to earthworms. All are limbless except the vibes, which contains four limbs. The vibes contain just four limbs. The vibes contain just four limbs. The, the limbs in the front, but did not have hind limbs. Amphisbiania are widely distributed, occurring in North America, Europe, Africa, South America, and the Caribbean. Most species are less than six inches, that's 150 millimeters long. Little is known of them aside their anatomy. And even that is difficult to study due to the mechanics of dissecting such small animals. Now here it's a picture of a reptile and the suborder Amphisbiana. Okay, this is called the vibes species. And just can just as you can see, its body is like that, like that of the earthworm, it has rudimentary eyes and has feet only in front, has four limbs that are very small. The suborder Serpentis, which is made up of the snakes. The suborder Serpentis or snakes consists of about 2,900 species of reptiles that are distinguished by their limbless condition and greatly elongated body and tail. Okay, reptiles that are limbless and have greatly elongated body and tail. The snakes, okay, just as it is in this slide, this python is of the suborder Serpentis. Unlike lizards, snakes lack movable eyelids. Their eyelids are not, they do not have eyelids that can close and open which results in a continuous and often disconcerted stare. Their eyes are always permanently open. Whether they are sleeping or whether they are awake, their eyes are actually permanently open. The snakes also lack external ear openings. The snakes also lack external ear openings. Internally, they do not have urinary bladder. The snakes lack urinary bladder. 
the visceral organs are elongated with reduction of the left member in relation to the right. For example, the left lung is greatly reduced or even lost entirely. However, snakes possess increased number of vertebrae and have, de have developed two novelties among vertebrates. One, a tracheal lung in the neck region and a venom conducting system for subduing their prey. So they have a tracheal lung in the neck region and they have a venom conducting system for subduing their prey. They possess upper temporal arc, leaving quadrates movable at both ends. They lack pineal openings. The snakes lack pineal openings. Here's a figure that's showing the, the member of the suborder Serpentis. This is a cobra. The cobra. Mm -hmm. Then we also have the python, python species. They are typical examples of organisms in some other serpentis. The next subclass we want to talk about is the subclass Acosaria, mm -hmm. which are also referred to as the ruling reptiles. These reptiles possess two temporal openings. They are diapsids. Most of them have long hind limbs and short forelimbs. They do not possess a pineal opening in the skull, but with an antorbital fenestry, they have an antorbital fenestry. They are fenestry, the openings in the skull are in front of the orbit. And one on the outer surface of the lower jaw. Their ribs are typically two-headed. The ribs of these crocodilians, the crocodiles, they, they, they have two-headed ribs, they are cosirians. The ichthyon and pubis are elongated. Their teeth are in deep sockets. The teeth of the, the acosarians are in deep sockets. Thus, they are called, they are said to be Echodont. Most of them possess some armor, particularly in their head and even in their skins, they have some armor. There's only one extant order in the subclass Acosaria. The other is Crocodilia, which are also called the Crocodilians. Examples include the crocodiles, the alligators, the chiomans, the gavios and the false gavios. The other crocodilia or crocodilians. The other crocodilia is composed of 25 species of large, primarily aquatic or amphibious reptiles. In addition to crocodiles and alligators, the order includes two non-familiar animals, the chiomans and the gavios. They are rather generalized in body form, but with a flattened skull, the nostrils on the tip of the snout, and a well developed secondary palate. Typically, the pubis is included, excluded from the acetabulum or a hip socket, and the fifth toe is reduced to a stump. Crocodilians are largely nocturnal animals that live in or near water in the tropical and subtropical regions of Africa, Asia, and America. They are nocturnal animals. They're active, more active at night than during the day. They hunt at night more than the day. All crocodilians are carnivores. They generally hunt by shield, waiting in ambush for prey and then attacking ferociously. Their bodies are well adapted for this type of hunting with eyes on top of their heads and their nostrils on top of their snouts 
so that they can see and breathe while laying quietly submerged in water. They have enormous mouths studded with sharp teeth and very strong neck. A valve in the back of the mouth prevents water from entering the air passage when a crocodile feeds underwater. Now this is a picture of the Estuarian crocodile. So far, we have discussed about the classification of reptiles. Thanks for listening. So we have now concluded our lecture on reptiles. Watch out for another lecture on the birds, the apes. <laughs>